Hello everyone, it's Matimus, hope you're having a great day. You're probably wondering, why am I wearing a British Army helmet? Well, it's quite applicable because the topic we're going to talk today is about um, the British Army and particularly, what is the Falkland Islands like as a deployment or somewhere where you would go um, if you were sent there overseas from the British Army? Now, fortunately enough, and I say fortunately enough because I thought it was a great experience, which we will discuss, I was able to go to the Falkland Islands for a three-month tour. Now, normally a tour of the Falkland Islands is around six months to a year, dependent. It may have changed since I was in. Uh, I only did a short stint because I was what was put on war stores. It was kind of a temporary deployment, basically, a, I guess what you call an alley posting or a really good posting because you only have to go there for so long. And we'll talk about it a little bit more in a while, but there's a reason as to why you only want to go there so long. But uh, the Falkland Islands, as you're probably well aware, um, was unfortunately a war that happened back in the 80s. Um, it should never have really happened. The Argentinians decided to have a good old blast at it and unfortunately failed miserably. Um, and obviously, ever since then, we've held our stand at the islands to keep it protected from any future potential attack. And the British Army, obviously, along with the Air Force and the Royal Navy, are concurrently sending their forces over there to allow that protection all, all year round, all the time. Uh, the people of the Falkland Islands mostly want to be British, and that's the way it will stay temporarily. Without going into politics here, I really want to just discuss what you're going to expect or what to expect and what's going to happen when you get deployed or get sent to the Falkland Islands. Now, of course, each trade is very different. I've got to take this helmet off, guys. It's driving me nuts. Um, each trade is very different, okay, because obviously if you're going to be in an infantry regiment, you're obviously going to be practicing a lot of infantry skills um, and everything that's applicable to your trade. Being that myself, I was in the Remi or the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers, my primary focus was to get the vehicles and equipment ready for the troops to train on on the islands. Now, Specifically, I won't go too much into the trade right now, but I'll quickly go over what my primary role going over there was. So I was sent over there to look after what's called the War Stores. The War Stores is basically all the equipment that the United Kingdom didn't want to bring back after the war and decided it was going to be a lot more cheap and effective to just leave that equipment on the islands, because if you're aware, the Falkland Islands is a long, long way away. Argentina to the UK is a big distance to travel, and it's more cost-effective to just leave it all there. And that's what they did, and they created a stores building that purely holds all the old equipment that could potentially be brought back into service if it kicks off again. So that was kind of my purpose, was to go out there and maintain and keep the war stores battle ready if it came to it. Now, war stores is interesting because it basically means that the vehicles are mothballed. They're not started up for the most part. They're not run around. We don't use them much unless absolutely required. Uh, and we basically went there to service them, keep them in, in good order, keep them in check to make sure everything's working. Quite a benign task overall. It was quite boring. Um, you know, you're looking after vehicles that are extremely old, Leyland Daffs. Um, you know, Bedford, Four Tons, Land Rovers, the old school Land Rovers, not the Wolves and all the fast turboed engines that you have on them nowadays. Uh, it was all the old equipment and, you know, it is what it is. It was good to get your skills back up to practice and practice the old school uh, mechanics because, you know, you don't have electronics and things on these engines. They're, they're old school. Uh, so it was good for that, but overall it was quite boring. I mean, War Stores is... It, they used to call it war boards because it was just boring. Like, it was just... There was very little for you to do other than just maintain the engines. Anyway, so that was my primary role out there. Now let's just go from start to finish of a typical deployment for, say, a Remi soldier or an overall soldier going out there. Now the Air Force and the Navy are very different, and I can't put my take on that because I'm not in the Navy and I'm not in the Air Force. So they're obviously going to have their own respective experiences and the things that they do, but some things will still apply. Let's start off with where you're going to leave from. Well, if you're in the British Armed Forces, you're always going to depart from RAF Bryce Norton, which is the airfield in the United Kingdom where you're going to set off from. You pretty much go to that airport to go anywhere around the world whenever you get deployed, whether it be Canada, the Falklands, Iraq, Afghanistan, wherever it may be. So you're going to leave from RAF Bryce Norton, and you're going to head all 
all the way down to Ascension Island. Now Ascension Island is basically a stop off point for the aircraft to refuel, change crews, whatever it may be, and for you to honestly have a bit of a break, because it is a long flight, it is a drawn out flight, it's not fun, uh, the aircraft that you go in is obviously not exactly the most comfortable, you're not going to get an in-flight in -flight movie, uh, you're packed in there, you're wearing a uniform, and it's just not, it's not a fun experience. Once you stop off at Ascension, you'll probably stay there normally, depending on, you know, the air crew and the RAF. They take their time, I'm just kidding. Um, you can normally take within about six or seven hours, or it can even be quicker than that. It can even take longer than that, depending on delays. Uh, if the aircraft's running smooth, they'll probably head off in about eight hours, and then you'll fly from Ascension straight to RAF Mount Pleasant. Yes, that is the name of the aircraft base that is based in the Falkland Islands. It's primarily used for all air traffic. Now, obviously, being the Falkland Islands is well away from the UK, not many people like to fly there, and there's no requirement for them to, because there's nothing there, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a second. But once you land there, you're going to pretty much experience the instant you get there why the Falkland Islands is one of those postings that's good and bad. It's good, for the most part, because you're left alone. Okay, it's a very isolated island, everybody's quite close-knit, close community, you know the posting is going to be very close-bonded with the people you're around, but it's a very chilled out and relaxed military environment. There isn't the rigidity you have in some of the garrisons back in the UK. Um, yes, of course, if the RSN's marching around, he's going to pick you up for stuff, but it's a lot more relaxed. They know that this posting is not exactly on the top wish list of places that you want to go, but at the same instance, you still have the ability to do a lot of things there that you wouldn't be able to be doing anywhere else in the world, which is great. So you'll land there from a very long flight, so you'll be very tired, and you'll go to your, uh, your quarters. Now the airport, uh, this very small arrivals terminal, is quite interesting. When you go there, make sure that when you get your ticket to go, keep it. I keep all my mementos. Uh, I have a stamp in my passport saying that I went to Ascension Island and that I went to the Falkland Islands. It's a good thing to have. It's a cool experience. You know, you've, it's a long way away from home. You're probably never, ever going to go there again. There'd be no requirement for you to go there. And a lot of people who say, oh, I've been here, I've been there. Trust me, they probably haven't been to the Falkland Islands because there's no requirement for them to be there. It's an isolated island in the middle of nowhere off the coast of Argentina. Get that stamp. It's cool. It's a cool thing to say you've been and done. Um, so once you've gone through the arrivals lounge, which is tiny, you're going to get sent to your accommodation. And your accommodation is in what I used to call the Herringbone accommodation. It's a huge base, uh, Mount Pleasant. It's not just an airport. It's the entire military complex. Um, but the Herringbone accommodation is basically the building is placed in one long corridor. And off each of that corridor's splines, or spines, I guess, of accommodation in different various buildings, whether it be the gym, the cookhouse, uh, the administration building, whatever it may be. And everything is connected via a corridor. So you technically, for the most part, if you need to do day-to-day -day business, you don't actually have to go between buildings. You can just walk through a corridor, open the doors, and through you go, which I'll talk to you a little bit more about in a second. So yeah, you'll go to your accommodation, uh, it's very basic. It's really, really basic. I mean, you've got to remember that because it's so isolated out there, they don't get huge flights of, of supplies all the time. Um, be aware that for the most part, you're really going to have to be careful of what you um, want to expect out there. You know, you're not going to have Sky TV and all this stuff that you, you want to watch every day. You're going to have local radio. I don't even know if they had local TV, but anyway, it's very simplistic. The internet is obviously very slow out there if you do get internet access. Uh, it's beds and stuff that are all very simplistic. I don't know, they may have changed it. It's not like Z type accommodation, which I'm sure many of you are used to nowadays, which I never got access to. So it's very simple stuff, but at the end of the day, it's quite a short posting for the most part, so don't get too upset about the kind of accommodation you're in. Now, as I mentioned before, there's good and bad sides of being posted to the Falklands. One of the bad sides of going to the Falklands is boredom, okay? Once you finish an everyday work day, whether you're infantry or, or you're a Remy or a signal or whatever it may be, there's not much to do. There's no town to go down drinking, and if there is, you're not really gonna wanna go down there because there's no one there, there's barely anyone there. It's a very small population on the island. You're gonna stay on camp, okay? There's gonna be a few things you're gonna be able to do on camp. Go to the gym, go to the gym, drink, drink, drink. They're the things that primarily you're going to be doing there. Um, if you're like me and have a good time with the guys uh, in the unit you're with, for the most part that's what you tend to do. Now there are other things, obviously I'm being a bit sarcastic with the going to the gym and drinking. There are other things you can obviously do. Okay, So there's an indoor bowling alley, there's a small movie theatre, 
Um, they've got some other things that you can do. There's a go-karting uh, arena, which is fantastic. We had a blast there. We, I think we went there three or four times. Really cheap, full-sized go-karting track outside. Uh, really, really good fun. We went down there with, uh, I think, a few of the guys from the RAF as well and had a blast, had a bit of competition. But overall, that's about it. There's not much else to do. And this is why I'm saying it's the bad side of things. Because eventually you've done enough working out and you've done enough bowling and you've done enough go-karting that you're like, hmm, now what do I do? Internet's slow, don't have much to do, not many people to socialize with in the accommodation because it's quite a small, close-knit area. Everybody goes to the bar. Everybody goes to the bar and starts drinking. And uh, it's great in a way because you get to involve yourselves with different branches of the armed forces of the UK that you never normally would. The RAF, the Royal Navy, the Royal Marines, they're all using the same bar, the massive bar that they have there. And it's great. You can meet loads of new people, loads of new experiences. New ships come in all the time, destroyers, frigates, whatever else may be. And I'm sure Queen Elizabeth and a beautiful aircraft carrier class will eventually show up there one day. Um, and you get to intermingle with people you wouldn't normally get to, and it's great. But there's also a bad side towards that. The army have their <laughs> their own, I guess, uh, camaraderie. So does the RAF, the Navy, and of course the Marines. And now and then things can kick off. It gets a little rough around the edges in the bar. And you just got to be careful with it. Honestly, don't ruin your career getting into some stupid scrap over an RAF posting um, or, a, or a Navy posting soldier or sailor or airman or whatever it may be. It's just not worth it. So enjoy yourself at the bar. But again, don't go over the top. Like, take it easy. I think when I went there, I drank a little bit too much. I should have kind of calmed it down. There's only so much you can do out there. But I think drinking is not the way to go. So just something to think about. Uh, another thing with the Falkland Islands is you've got to, you've got to do it. Or you'll, I think you'll actually nearly be forced to do it when you go there by your chain of command. But your battlefield tours, whether it's Goose Green, uh, all the other battlefield tours that you can go on, go check them out. It's absolutely amazing of an experience to go and see some of the things out there um, and the kind of uh, heroic acts that some of the British Army and even the Argentine Army took back in those days. Very, very uh, touching tours that you can go on to you know you see where the victoria crosses were issued due to the gallantry or gallantry that some of the soldiers portrayed in some of these battles it's just outstanding such a great experience so that's something you've got to do please please do that another thing when you're driving out there take it easy okay it's just like being on suffield if you've been to suffield rattlesnake road the gravel uh, on the road if you're traveling beyond about 60 k's an hour or 40 30 30 or 40 miles an hour the roads get really dangerous on the gravel. So please take it easy. The civilian issued Land Rovers that had out there, not the British Army ones, and they got lots of them that blue and green. Uh, take them easy. They're a lot faster than the British Army Rovers that we have because they're a lot more whippy. Take it easy. Please be smart. Uh, we had a couple of instances where people have had some serious accidents out there. You'll obviously be driving to the battlefield tours. You'll be driving to different areas. So just take it easy. Take it, take it smooth. The weather out there, guys, is insane. I'm not kidding. You can have four seasons in one day. And I mean that. Snow, rain, sun, and intense wind can happen within an instant. So again, if you're out there, pack your kit correctly. Okay, Pack for every single season. And mostly pack for a wet and cold one. Because year-round, it's mostly pretty cold. Uh, which I'll talk to you about penguins in a second. Another experience that's really, really good for you to do um, is once you've done the battlefield tours, is actually going to see the minefields that they still have out there. Now, the Argentinians back in the day, uh, they flew helicopters over battlefields and threw hundreds and hundreds of landmines, just threw them out. They never plotted them, they never charted them, they didn't check where they were. They just threw them out the door, let them land, and left them. And ever since then, that's where they've been. And there's large portions of the island that still have these minefields in that they don't want to clear. The British Army have no intention of clearing it out because there's no requirement for them to be there. The farmers let their cattle roll onto there. For the most part, the mines, after so many years, have kind of sunk into the peat or the, or the soggy soil or grass, uh, and they're not really exposed. The cattle can kind of walk over, and it's not really a big deal. But if a heavy set soldier was walking along there fully kitted up and stood on one of those things, it's index. So obviously, there's a lot of areas where you'll see the big triangular sign danger minefields. Really, really cool. Um, also extremely dangerous, so you need to be really smart out there, and you'll get a full, um, I guess, explosive ordnance and disposal uh, briefing out there, or UXO briefing, unexploded ordnance briefing, which kind of gives you an idea of, you know, don't just trail off somewhere if you're on the battlefield tour, don't just go wherever you want to go, stick to the path, you never know what could be out there, there's still a lot of unexploded ordnance on that island, it was a war zone at one point, so just be smart about it. Another thing, as I mentioned with the penguins, uh, is that is a great experience to try out. You get to go to one of the beaches. I can't remember what it's called, the beach, but uh, 
absolutely fantastic to walk with penguins, literally. Little penguins, there's hundreds of them on the beach. Um, when the sunset sets in the, in the evening there, it is just one of the most beautiful experiences actually walking with penguins. It's so surreal, it's calm. The waves, uh, the sea, I'm an ocean guy, I love the seaside, I miss the UK beaches and stuff. And being involved in that is just fantastic. I loved seeing those animals and just kind of hanging out with penguins on a beach. It just doesn't just happen, that's a natural environment. Uh, obviously it's very cold environments so they love it by the coast so definitely go try that out um what else about the falkland islands yeah i think the, for the most part the two number one top things for me were the penguins and the battlefield tours and for the battlefield tours if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below i'll try my best to answer them but if you are going on a deployment to the falklands please don't put your head in your hands and go oh no it's the falkland islands you're gonna have a good time. I really do think you're gonna have a great experience. You gotta remember, it's not a posting that that many people get. It's not a common posting. And it's something you can say that you've done. You've been to the Falkland Islands. There's not many people around the world that have been there. And yes, it's a middle of nowhere island. The only thing that's really on it is sheep and a few villages. But for the most part, it's still an experience to be there. And you can say that you've been a part of the armed forces serving in the Falkland Islands as a defensive force because at the end of the day if you're being sent there you're being sent there for a reason you're not just being sent there to tinker around you're being sent there to look after or train for potentially which will never happen and i hope it never happens another conflict kicking off with argentina and that to me is something you can definitely put on your belt and say yeah i was involved in the falcon Islands. it's pretty cool um there's going to be times when you're going to be absolutely bored senseless and you should really try and look into yourself and say what can i do to better myself Start some schooling, do some courses. There's lots of educational stuff that you can do there. They do have a library uh, where you can do online courses and stuff. There's a lot of downtime that you're gonna have there. So obviously make use of it. Don't just go drinking all the time. Get fit, there's a great gym there. They've got a pool there. I went swimming every morning, get a lot of fitness in. Make sure you try and involve yourself as much as you can with, uh, there's even social groups, you know, like uh, clay pigeon shooting. There's archery, obviously the go-karting group. Uh, there's a mechanical group there too. You can actually fix some of the vehicles up that, that aren't normally repairable for instance like uh they've got i think a couple of sports cars there that they can tear around on the island great little experience get involved with it do things that are outside the normal don't just sit in your room you know tinkering around on facebook uh, or just drinking at the bar because i started to get into that routine eventually i was like well i need to get out of this let's let's go do something and because it is such an isolated island you do have that risk of getting complacent and kind of just settling into this oh i hate this, this is boring i'm gonna go to the bar get involved do stuff like enjoy your posting don't just fight through it thinking that it's you know the worst thing on earth so I hope a couple of things there that you've taken from this is going to give you a bit of preparation in going. One thing I will say in terms of preparing yourself, get a really good waterproof civilian jacket, uh, some good gloves like waterproof and windproof gloves because it's always going to rain there uh, for the most part throughout the day, even in the summertime. If it's snowing, again, pack some really good like winter socks, uh, winter boots, good hat, uh, like a beanie or whatever. Uh, because at the end of the day, it's going to get cold, it's going to get wet, and you want to make sure you're not going to make your life a misery, a living hell. Um, what else is really important to take out there? I think that's about it. You know, if you've got a laptop, obviously try and bring a laptop, bring some games if you like gaming and like that stuff. Upload as much music as you can before you go out there, because as I said, the internet is quite slow there. When I was there, it was extremely slow, so if you want new music, you should make a huge playlist before you go out, upload it, take it with you, and then you're good to go. Um... Yeah, and that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And for those of you who are deploying to the Falkland Islands or have, um, let me know what your experiences were in the comment section below. Or if you have any questions about the Falkland Islands, hopefully I can cover them in the comment section below. Um, so that's it for today, guys. I'm going to love you and leave you there. I'm going to stick my stupid helmet back on and finish this video off in the right manner because, you know, it is a British Army-based video. Guys, I'd really appreciate if you can go check out a couple of the uh, people who have recently started a uh, veterans gaming uh, veterans gaming veterans youtube channels and um, they're in the comment section below or the description box below i'd love for you to go check out their channels a really good bunch of guys all british serving or ex-serving soldiers we're trying to start a veterans community up a little bit uh, and get the british side of the military community on youtube more there's a huge influx of american uh, youtubers which is great but it's about time that the mongs the mongs of the British Army can get shown up a little bit. And I know a lot of uh, ex-British soldiers uh, have been involved in talking to me and saying, you know, I'd love to get involved and, you know, try and promote the, the British side of YouTube a bit more because we are really uh, being 
getting our asses kicked by the American veterans world. And rightly so, you know, it's a different mentality. But it's about time the Brits actually started getting our image and name out there as, as soldiers and as a YouTube community. Because we like to have a laugh as much as any other American or Canadian or Australian does. Or any other world uh, power, I guess. But if you do want to go check out them, please feel free to. I have actually done a couple of live streams with uh, one of the YouTubers, Zero Foxtrot Vlogs. Fantastic guy. Ex Remy as well, veteran. Brother to my own heart, so I respect him big time. There's also names Nico, Liam Brown, and Master Tate, along with a couple of others. So please go check them out. If I didn't na mention your name, uh, Mob Squad, I'm sorry. And that is the name of the group uh, that I'm a part of. It's called the Mob Squad, M-O-B Squad. We call it the Mob Squad because when you leave the British Army, you leave the mob. Uh, the mob is the group we call ourselves as the British Army. And the Mob Squad is a group of YouTubers that have come together and trying to make a bit of a community, a bit of a network for one another. So if you want to go check them out, I'd really appreciate it. A good bunch of guys, great content. Uh, go and have a look. And uh, there is a Discord channel there too, so go feel free to check out uh, their channels. The link of that Discord is in the description boxes. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Any questions, let me know. Bye-bye.